I'm Prehistoric Nick, a fossil expert here at Jurassic Quest. What you're looking at is the Triassic period. The Triassic started about 251 million years ago at the end of another period that we call the Permian. One of the earliest dinosaurs that we know of was Eoraptor. Its name means Dawn Thief because it lived at the dawn of the age of dinosaurs. Eoraptor made its home in what is now Argentina about 231 million years ago. Beside that is a kind of skinny dinosaur named Acelophysis. Its name means hollow form because they had hollow sacks of air in their joints instead of cartilage. Acelophysis is the oldest known dinosaur from North America. And here is a large predator known as Herrerasaurus. Herrerasaurus is the name of one of the largest predatory dinosaurs that lived in the Triassic period. It lived in what is now Argentina about 231 million years ago. Hey there! Folks, this is Safari Sarah. The Triassic period was the dawn of the age of dinosaurs, but it too had to come to an end. Just a little over 200 million years ago, the Earth encountered another mass extinction. Believed to be caused by an increased period of volcanic activity, it caused the extinction of roughly 70% of life on Earth. This wiped out a lot of bigger animals at the time. Without big competitors, dinosaurs thrived, and in the Jurassic period, they quickly became the gargantuan creatures we think of when we hear the word dinosaur. Captain Caleb here. I hope your auto insurance covers water damage, because in order to get into the Jurassic period, we're diving deep into the Jurassic Ocean. The big shell you see is an ammonite. Ammonites are cephalopods. That means they are relatives of the squid, octopus, and nautilus. Their spiral shells protected them from predators. Some shells got to reach sizes of six feet across or more. The animal that looks kind of like a small dolphin is an ichthyosaurus. That name means fish lizard. It's an aquatic reptile, not a mammal, so it isn't related to dolphins at all. We can't forget about the small, long-necked animal swimming with it. That's a plesiosaurus, another important part of this ecosystem. As a wise man once said, there's always a bigger fish. The big critter here is the magical Leopleurodon. Leopleurodon was a member of the Pliosaur family, which is a kind of short-necked plesiosaur. It's important to point out that the animals you see here are not dinosaurs, but reptiles that lived in the ocean at the same time as the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs for the most part lived on land and had legs that went straight underneath their hips and not splayed out to the sides like lizards or crocodiles. Hello everyone, this is Park Ranger Marty, pleased to make your acquaintance. Outside of your vehicle is where we keep our Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus was a predator from the very beginning of the Jurassic period, around 200 million years ago. Now a lot of people have ideas of Dilophosaurus spitting poison or venom or acid, and a lot of the pictures and toys show them with a big frill around their neck. Well, unfortunately, the movies that this idea comes from used what we call artistic license, which is just a fancy way of saying they just plain made it up. We don't know for sure that some dinosaurs didn't spit poison, but we don't have any reason to think that Dilophosaurus did. There's also no evidence that they had that colored ruff. The frill is seen in other creatures when frightened, like a frilled neck lizard or a wild William Shakespeare, but not in Dilophosaurus as far as we know. Who can name the dinosaur here covered in plates? If you said Stegosaurus, you're right! Stegosaurus is a Jurassic plant eater whose back, neck, and tail were covered in bony plates. Stegosaurus had a special weapon. Along its tail, it had a set of spikes called a thagomizer that it would use to defend itself from predators. And the predator it had to worry about the most was Allosaurus. T-Rex isn't the only scary meat-eating dinosaur we have here at Jurassic Quest. Allosaurus was one of the larger predators around in the late Jurassic. Allosaurus had long arms for a theropod with big hooked claws. These could help it grip onto its prey while it used its serrated teeth as its primary weapon. 
We know it used its arms because scientists have found signs of microscopic stress fractures on the bones of their forearms. This happens in bones when a person or an animal is using force to move heavy weight with their bodies. They might have used their arms to keep prey from getting away or possibly to hold onto a stegosaurus's tail to avoid getting hit. The big long necked dinosaur in this scene is a patasaurus. A patasaurus is what we call a sauropod or a long necked dinosaur. Sauropods were the biggest animals to ever walk on earth. In order to get that big, sauropods had to eat all the time. To eat even more, these long necked giants didn't even waste time chewing, but swallowed the leaves from trees whole. But they had a special trick to help them digest their food. Sauropods would sometimes crane their long necks down to the ground and swallow small stones. Those rocks would help them grind up their food once it was inside. Those rocks are called gastroliths, or stomach rocks in Latin. These gastroliths are super important because they help scientists to learn the migration patterns of these dinosaurs. By matching the gastroliths back to the areas where the rocks originally came from. Please pause your audio tour until your dinosaur herd migrates on up to the next scene. Safari Sarah here again. After the end of the Jurassic, we find ourselves in the early Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous was the longest of the three periods of the Mesozoic. The Cretaceous period saw all kinds of strange new life forms, including weird new plants that we call flowers. We're starting off in what is now England during the early Cretaceous, roughly 120 million years ago. The duck-billed dinosaur you see is what we call an iguanodon, and it's one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered and named. Some of you might have already guessed that iguanodon means iguana tooth. When iguanodon was discovered in England, no one had ever even heard of dinosaurs yet. So when it came time to name this bizarre new animal, the only similarities anyone could think of were that its teeth kind of look like the teeth of an iguana, only bigger. The very first drawings of Iguanodon depicted it as a giant iguana-like creature. The animal it's next to is Baryonyx. Baryonyx was a carnivore, and specifically, it ate fish. We know that it ate fish because when the first Baryonyx skeleton was found in England in the 1980s, it had fossilized fish bones and fish scales inside of its belly, along with a few bones from a young Iguanodon. Since it lived in what is now England, as one of its last meals was fish, this could be the earliest evidence of anyone in the UK ordering fish and chips. Our quest has now taken us from Europe to the continent of Asia, still in the early Cretaceous. The big dino you see here is Eutyrannus, the feather tyrant. Eutyrannus is part of the Tyrannosauridae family. That means it's a relative of the T-Rex. Eutyrannus lived in the Leoning province of China. What makes Eutyrannus special is that it is the largest dinosaur that we know of with feathers. We know that Eutyrannus had feathers because of where and when it lived. About 120 million years ago, a volcanic eruption blanketed much of the Leoning province with hot ash. Like what happened at Pompeii thousands of years ago. While that was devastating to the animals at that time, it's great for paleontologists because it preserved soft tissue, in some cases, including feathers. Hi, it's Park Ranger Marty again, and welcome to the early Cretaceous North America. The furry guy is Utah Raptor. Now let's see, can anyone guess where Utah Raptor was discovered? That's right, Cincinnati. Just kidding, folks. Utah Raptor was found in Utah. Utah Raptor is the largest known member of the Raptor family. Now behind him is a predator named Seatz. Seatz was a massive predator that lived at the end of the early Cretaceous. Very little is known about Seatz due to how recent of a discovery it is. But it is thought to be a member of the Allosauridae group that lived into the early Cretaceous. Seatz lived in North America at about the same time as some members of the Tyrannosaur family. But those Tyrannosaurs didn't get any larger than about the size of a Great Dane because the Alpha Predator role had already been filled by Seatz. 
It wasn't until Seats went extinct that larger tyrannosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex took the stage. Our journey now takes us to the continent of Africa in the early Cretaceous period. The dinosaur standing here is one that I bet a lot of you know. Can you guess what it is? Did you say Spinosaurus? You got it! Spinosaurus is one of the largest carnivores to ever walk the earth. But it mostly ate fish. We know that because Spinosaurus's teeth have been found embedded in fossilized bones of large fish. Although, they have also been found in the bones of other dinosaurs. Spinosaurus is a creature that was a mystery for a long time. Its fossils were discovered in 1912, but they were destroyed during World War II, when the museum they were in was hit during a bombing raid. It wasn't until the 1990s when Spinosaurus's fossils were rediscovered. In fact, we've learned more about the Spinosaurus in the last 20 years than we have in the last century. We now know that Spinosaurus was a massive predator that lived in and out of the water in marshy waterways of what we now know to be Northern Africa, preying on fish the size of cars. We're moving through time again, folks. Welcome to the late Cretaceous. The Spinosaurus we just saw spent a lot of time in and around water, and that's where we're going. Welcome to the Western Interior Seaway. That's a shallow sea that stretched from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean during the Cretaceous period. The Great Plains of what is now the United States and Canada used to be underwater. Lots of marine fossils are found in places like Kansas. The first creature here is the long-necked Elasmosaurus. It's a relative of the Plesiosaurus, but much bigger. Second is Archelon, the biggest sea turtle known to exist. It had a leathery shell called a carapace, and just like sea turtles today, it probably laid eggs on land. The huge, fearsome creature is Tylosaurus. A relative of Mosasaurus, its name means the knob lizard because of a bony protrusion on the end of its snout that might have been used to ram into its prey. Tylosaurus is a member of the Squamata family. That's the group of reptiles that includes lizards and snakes. They had forked tongues for tasting scents in the water. They even had a row of teeth in the back of their mouths for holding onto prey in the water. And that scary fish that you see that looks like a cross between a piranha and a tuna is Xyphactinus. Xyphactinus was a voracious predator that lived in the oceans all over the world. It could reach lengths of up to 20 feet long. Welcome back to Asia in the late Cretaceous period. Here we have three kinds of dinosaurs from Mongolia, starting with Velociraptor. Despite what you may have seen in movies, Velociraptor is not six feet tall, but actually about three feet tall, six feet long, and about 20 to 30 pounds. Just think of an extra scary turkey. We also know that at least one Velociraptor attacked a Protoceratops, the next dinosaur in this scene. This is thanks to the fossil of a Velociraptor and Protoceratops found, who died still locked in combat. The Protoceratops broke the Velociraptor's arm with its powerful beak, moments before they were both buried in sand by a landslide. The other dinosaur in the scene, Oviraptor, has an unfortunate name, meaning egg thief. When this dinosaur was discovered, it was found over a nest of eggs thought to belong to Protoceratops. After later research, scientists realized it was sitting on a nest of its own eggs. But the name stuck and is still debated if Oviraptor actually ate eggs. Here at Jurassic Quest, ours take theirs sunny side up every morning for breakfast. Yet another dinosaur from Mongolia is the large Therizinosaurus you see here with the long claws. The claws on its hands could grow up to three feet long, making them the longest claws in the animal kingdom. Most of what we know about Therizinosaurus comes from animals closely related to it. The only fossils we have of this animal are its shoulders, arms, and hands. 
It is believed to be an herbivore, but we are still looking for more fossils to know for sure. The dinosaur next to it is a Lorotitan, lived in what is now eastern Russia. It's in a special group of duck-billed dinosaurs called Lambiosaurs, which are famous for the elaborate crests on their heads. These crests would have certainly served as display structures, but may also have been used in some Lambiosaurs as resonating chambers to make sounds used to communicate effectively through the herd. Hi, Park Ranger Marty here. Hope you're not mad at me about accidentally releasing the T-Rexes. Anyway, in this scene, you see Shiantrosaurus. Shiantrosaurus is a tyrannosaur from China and is closely related to Aliaramus from Mongolia. Both have awfully long, narrow noses for members of the tyrannosaur family. We're not sure what those noses may have been used for. Maybe to cut through water, making them faster, more accurate fishermen, or maybe they were specializing in smaller, faster prey, not needing the powerful bite of a T-Rex. Speaking of which, if you see one of them, please let one of our four security officers know. Now, scientists only described this dinosaur in 2014, so there's still a lot of unanswered questions about it. But I can tell you this much. In the United States, we do not typically refer to this dinosaur as Shiantrosaurus. We typically just call it Pinocchio Rex. Now we travel to Argentina. The big animal you see in this scene is Giganotosaurus, arguably one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs. Though it may look a lot like T-Rex, it's actually a much different animal. Unlike a T-Rex, it has three claws on each hand, a lighter bone structure, and teeth that were designed for slicing. Unlike a T-Rex's, which were meant for crushing through bones and ripping car tops open. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, if you see one of our missing T-Rex's, please let one of our three security guards know where. And second largest in this scene is Carnotaurus, which means meat-eating bull because of peculiar horns on its head. It might have used its horns as a weapon against other predators. It's a very funny looking dinosaur, not just because of the horns, but because of its tiny little arms. Carnotaurus has one of the smallest arms of any known dinosaur, even smaller than the T-Rex. Welcome to the duck Bill Dynasty. The dinosaur with the long crest on the back of its head is called Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus is a hadrosaur, a family of dinosaurs sometimes called duck billed dinosaurs because of the shape of their snouts. Other hadrosaurs include Iguanodon, Oranosaurus, Allorotitan, and Edmontosaurus, among many others. Parasaurolophus is a cool dinosaur because it's one of the few dinosaurs where we know what they might have sounded like. Paleontologists discovered that by looking at the crest on its head. What they found were tubes inside going back and forth between the nasal passage and the throat. When they recreated blowing air through their tubes, they discovered that the crest would have made a horn sound. Um, the new script here just says make horn sounds. No, guys, I'm not going to do that. Sarah. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> By the way, hadrosaurs are prey animals. Their sound might have attracted large predators. If our missing T-Rexes hear that sound coming from one of your cars, they might be following the tour back in the direction of their cage. So perhaps we should uh, move on to the next stop. Yeah, yeah. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying animal to ever take to the sky. It lived in what's now Texas because everything is bigger in Texas. It's named after the Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec feather serpent deity. It had a wingspan of 36 feet. That's the same as a small plane. Standing like it is here, it was the height of a giraffe, but would weigh less than 600 pounds. That's a lot but it's incredibly light for an animal of this size because it was doing everything possible to be as light as possible, including having very hollow bones. This is necessary for it to achieve flight. Quetzalcoatlus was actually not a dinosaur, but a pterosaur. 
pterosaurs are a family of flying reptiles that lived at the same time as dinosaurs. Like many, but not all pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus had no teeth. Unlike our missing T-Rexes who have very large teeth. The big carnivore in here is Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus is a close relative of T-Rex, roughly half the size of a fully grown T-Rex. Albertosaurus is named after the Canadian province of Alberta, where almost all of the remains of Albertosaurus have been found. This makes Albertosaurus a Canadian dinosaur. And if you listen very carefully, you can almost hear it apologizing. Sorry about that. The other dinosaur here, Anzu, was named after a Mesopotamian bird demon. It is a large North American oviraptorid found in the Hell Creek Formation of South Dakota and had a beak with no teeth. Anzu is relatively a new discovery and scientists are still trying to learn more about this creature. In this scene, we have a group of dinosaurs called ceratopsians, or horned-faced dinosaurs. The ones in this scene include Titanoceratops, Cosmoceratops, Styracosaurus, and Brachyceratops. Now, there are two families of ceratopsians, Chasmosaurines and Centrosaurines. Now, Chasmosaurines have two prominent eye horns above their eyes and a very large frill. Centrosaurines do not typically have prominent eye horns and tend to have smaller frills, but sometimes they have some rather ornate horns coming out of those frills. This armored dinosaur is Ankylosaurus, also known as Fused Lizard. Ankylosaurus was armored from head to toe with bits of bones on their skin called osteoderms. They are known for having a bony club tail, which was used to swing back and forth as a weapon to deter predators. Scientists have even found a T-Rex fossil with a broken leg that was shattered at about the same height as an Ankylosaurus tail club. This suggests that Ankylosaurus could fight off a T-Rex and possibly even win. The animal here is a Pachycephalosaurus, meaning thick-headed lizard, named after its thick domed skull. It is often depicted as being used to headbutt each other for dominance, but some scientists think it is more likely used for display, and that the large dome didn't grow until much later in life, which has implications for the next dinosaur in this scene, Draco Rex Hogwartsia. And if that sounds like something from a Harry Potter book, that's because it's from a Harry Potter book. The name actually means Dragon King of Hogwarts because its skull looked a lot like the skull of a dragon. There are some who think that as this dinosaur aged, the shape of its skull changed and that what we're really seeing here is a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. But we won't know for sure until more fossils are found. I've got great news, everyone. Our brand new head of security, Lisa, has managed to locate one of the T-Rexes and lure it back to its area. That's great news because T-Rex is one of the most common favorite dinosaurs. So that means we can actually talk about the T-Rex, the Tyrant Lizard King, while we have one of them here to look at. Tyrannosaurus rex had the most powerful bite of any land animal, between 8,000 and 12,000 pounds per square inch. They needed such a powerful bite to crush the bones of the prey, or even tear through the roof of a car. The powerful bite wasn't the only trick the T-Rex had of its very short sleeve. It also had something called a septic bite. T-Rex had very short arms, so it couldn't brush its teeth. That means its mouth was filled with bits of its last meal, filling its mouth with bacteria. When T-Rex went hunting, it would sometimes bite into prey that got away. If that happened, some of the bacteria from T-Rex's mouth might infect the wound, causing the prey animal to get sick. T-Rex could use its terrific sense of smell to track that prey down. Uh, let's get out of here before that other Rex picks up our scent. On to the next area, the Triceratops. Park Ranger Marty can tell you all about them. They're his favorite. 
And finally, here at my favorite dinosaur, the Triceratops. The cool thing about Triceratops... No! The last T-Rex is in with the Triceratops' pen, and he's eating the Triceratops! Oh no, folks, this is terrible! That's my favorite Triceratops! Lisa, we've located the missing T-Rex! Lisa, do you copy? Oh no, this is terrible! Well, since we're here, Triceratops is an herbivore from the end of the Cretaceous period. That's the same time and place that T-Rex lived. Now, Triceratops means three horn face for pretty obvious reasons. Scientists used to think that Triceratops used the frill on the back of its head to defend its neck from T-Rex. That seems like it would make a lot of sense, but there's actually evidence that when T-Rex did eat Triceratops, he would sometimes bite down on that frill and pull the Triceratops' head right off. That meant it was less of a shield and more of a pull tab on my favorite dinosaur. But that crest was still there for some reason, most likely a display to attract mates or to scare away rival dinosaurs. Wait, I think that T-Rex is starting to notice your vehicle. Better make like a tree and bark out of here. Well, the good news is, at least we're not going to see anything scarier or with a bigger bite. <laughs> and now, for something scarier with an even bigger bite. Megalodon! Megalodon is the largest shark to ever swim the seas. It is believed to reach up to 60 feet in length and had rows of hundreds of teeth. These teeth would sometimes fall out and be replaced with new teeth, similar to sharks today. Megalodon teeth have been found on every continent, including Antarctica. For centuries, these teeth were thought to be the petrified tongues of dragons and sea serpents. What they actually were was no less scary. The good news is that Megalodon is definitely extinct despite what some TV shows and movies would have you think. While the ocean can be treacherous, Megalodon is not the danger in it. At least, not anymore. Stop.